Hello everybody. Welcome back to our chemistry class. Today's topic of discussion is structure of atoms or atomic structure. So we have learned about atoms. So now we are going to define what is the composition of atom. What is there inside the atom? And if there is anything inside the atom, how these things are arranged inside the atom? That is, we are going to discuss the atomic structure or structure of atom. So, topic for discussion is structure of atom. So, in earlier class, we have discussed Dalton's atomic theory. So, while discussing Dalton's atomic theory, we have discussed the concept of atoms. But as far as Dalton's atomic theory is concerned, the postulates given by Dalton, John Dalton, were found to be inaccurate. The reason being, when Dalton says atoms were the smallest unit which takes place in a chemical reaction. But with the advance of chemistry or the science and technology, we have found out is atoms who are not the smallest, but atoms who are, can be further subdivided into subatomic particles. That's what we call as fundamental particles. And those fundamental particles like electron, proton, neutron were found to be inside the atom. So, atoms and inside this atom we have subatomic particles like electrons, protons and neutrons which are collectively known as the fundamental particles. So, first of all, let's discuss the discovery of fundamental particles. First one is discovery of electron. How electron was discovered? Electrons were discovered by J. J. Thomson So he was a scientist who discovered electrons So George, the experiment by which J. J. Thomson discovered electrons were known as Cathode ray discharge tube experiment. Cathode ray discharge tube experiment. So, by this experiment, J. J. Thompson discovered electrons. So, we have cathode ray discharge tube. Let's see what is the experimental setup and how he come to the conclusion for discovery of these fundamental particles like electron and the properties of electron. This cathode ray discharge tube is nothing but a glass tube fitted with two electrodes cathode and anode. And this glass tube containing or fitted with two electrodes is connected to an external high voltage and the pressure inside the tube is made low by suction pump. So we are fitted with a suction pump so the air inside the tube is removed so the pressure inside the tube is low. So we have a low pressure discharge tube fitted with two electrodes cathode and anode. The discharge tube is connected to an external high voltage. So when the voltage is applied, a stream of particles emerge from cathode and moves towards the 
and not that particular substance or the particles which is moving from cathode to anode were classified as cathode rays and these cathode rays were known as the electrons so we have this So we have a glass tube. Inside this glass tube, two electrodes are fitted. And these electrodes are connected to an external circuit. This is pump through which air is to be sucked out. This is high voltage supply. Suction pump this is anode or this is positive electrode this is cathode which is negative so this setup is what we call as discharge tube experiment now, so we have this, when high voltage is passed through these electrodes at low pressure, a stream of particles emerge from these cathodes and it moves towards a node. These stream of particles were called as cathode ray. The anode were made of perforated, means small holes were made at the anode, so that these particles, after emerging from cathode, moving towards anode, pass through the anode and it strikes the glass surface behind this glass surface behind this anode we are coated with zinc sulfide so this is zinc sulfide coated why this is coated with zinc sulfide that is, we have to prove that there are some particles which is emerging from cathode and moving towards the anode. Now, how to prove that there are some particles which is going towards the anode? So, what is what we have considered is the anode is made of perforated metal. That means there are small holes at this anode. Now, when these particles move from cathode to anode, these Particles will pass through anode and will strike the glass behind this anode. So, when these particles strike the glass surface behind this anode, these particles will strike zinc sulfide coated. So, when these particles strike zinc sulfide, this will produce some glow. If there is formation of glow, mean this is not a phosphorescence. When someone strikes, this zinc sulfide will glow. So, if there is a formation of glow spots or bright spots, we can clearly say that there were some particles which were striking the zinc sulfide coating. So, 
degree sulfide coating is to prove the particles were emerging from cathode after passing through anode strikes the glass behind this anode whereas this produced glow and the production of glow at the zinc sulfide coated behind this anode proves that there were some particles which strike the glass surface. So this is experimental setup for discovery of electron. These cathode rays were nothing but electrons These particles were emerging from cathode and moving towards anode and these particles were observed when the pressure was low and high voltage was supplied, applied across the electrode. If the pressure is at, room temp uh, at normal temp pressure, then these particles were not observed. So as the pressure is decreased by shell pumping out the gas inside this tube makes the gas molecules present inside the tube is very less than the pressure is low at this low pressure and very high uh, voltage the streams are emerged from cathode and moves towards the anode so this is what we call as distorts tube experiment now let's see what are the properties of this discharge tube and or means one of the properties of this cathode rays and the conclusion drawn from the properties. So we have properties of cathode rays, cathode rays. First property. These cathode rays emerge from cathode and moves towards the anode. So why they are not as cathode rays? Because these particles or these rays were emerging from cathode and moves towards the anode. Emerge from cathode and moves towards anode. In a straight line. That means we are saying that there are some particles which are emerging from cathode and moving towards anode. These particles always moves in a straight line. Now we are saying that these cathode rays always moves in a straight path or straight line. Now how to prove any particle is moving in a straight line? Now we have these electrons. Or a cathode rays. These are emerging from cathode, moving towards anode. Now, J.J. Thompson observed that these rays always moves in a straight line. Now, how to prove? Let's see. If some opaque substance means a particle, some substance through which these rays cannot pass through. If some opaque substance is placed in the part of this cathode rays, shadows were formed behind. If shadows were formed behind, when the rays were obstructed by placing an opaque substance, it means these particles were always moves in straight line. So this always moves in straight line because they produce Shadows when an opaque material is placed in its path. So, formation of shadows behind the substance proves that these particles always move in straight line. Second, Property of this cathode rays. Cathode rays or these electrons are always negatively charged. Cathode rays 
are negatively charged. Now, why these cathode rays are negatively charged? How to prove? Cathode rays are negatively charged not because they are emerging from cathode which is negatively polarized or this is moving towards anode which is positively polarized. So, I repeat, cathode ray is emerging from cathode which is negatively polarized. So, again we are saying cathode rays are negatively charged. This doesn't mean the cathode rays are emerging from negative terminals. Now, we have to look at why this, how these cathode rays are negatively charged. Now, if any particular charge is moving in absence of electric field, means when this electric particle is passing through an electrical field containing two charges, which means two plates, positive plate and negative plate. If these particles are moving through this electric field without any deflection without any deflection that means this uh, this particle is uncharged if these particles when interacts with electric field it deflects from its normal path on either direction if there is a deflection when these particles interact with electric field then only then we can prove there are certain charges if these particles are deflected towards the positive plate of the electric field, then we say these are negatively charged. If these are deflected towards the positive, the negative polarized, then we say these are positively charged. So, why we are negatively charged? Because they are deflected towards the positive plate of electric field that means so we have electric field suppose this is positive this is negative now we are passing through a particle this particle is moving in straight line. Now, when this particle interacts with the electric field component, these particles were found to be deflected towards the positive. This is undeflected part. Normal and deflected deflected from normal path now since these particles when passed through electric field these were deflected towards the positive plate of electric field so if the particles moving toward the positive plate, the charge on this particle should be opposite to that of the plate. So since this is moving towards the positive plate of electric field, so the charge on these electrons or cathode rays were negatively charged. So cathode rays are negatively charged because when they are passed through an electric field, these rays were deflected towards the positive plate of electric field component. Now, this deflection, this is the angle of deflection. They are deflected from by a certain angle from its normal path. Now, this amount of deflection depends on some factors. So this amount of deflection from its normal path depends on some factors like the strength of electric field. If the strength of electric field is increased, the amount of deflection will be more. That means if the electric field applied is weak, if the strength of electric field applied is weak, the deflection will be less. If 
strength of electric field applied is more, the amount of deflection is also more. So this deflection, amount of deflection is directly proportional to strength of applied field, directly proportional. More the strength of electric field, more deflection. If the strength of electric field is less, deflection will be less. The second, this amount of deflection when these are passed through this electric field also depends on the mass of the substance. If the mass of the substance is heavier, deflection will be less. If the mass of substance is less, lighter particle, the amount of deflection will be more. So, amount of deflection is inversely related to the mass of particles present in this cathode ray. If the mass of particle is more, deflection is less. If the mass of particle is less, deflection will be more. So, this amount of deflection is inversely related to mass of the particles of this cathode ray. Third factor that affects this amount of deflection is the amount of charge present in this cathode ray or the quantity of charge of this particle cathode ray if more negative charges are present is if more number of electrons are present the quantity of deflection will be more if the less quantity of electrons are present in this cathode ray then this deflection will be less so the third factor that affects this deflection is directly proportional to quantity of charge in cathode rays. So these are the three factors by which the amount of deflection of any cathode ray when passing through an electric field component is observed. So whether we have more deflection or less deflection, but these cathode rays are always deflected towards the positive plate. So deflection towards the positive plate proves that the particles of this cathode this carries charge opposite to that of the charge on the plate that is this cathode rays are negatively charged. So this is second property. Third property of this cathode rays, these cathode rays possess kinetic energy. So we have a stream of particles called cathode rays emerging from cathode, moving towards the node. These are moving. If these are moving, means this must have some velocity. If they have velocity, that means they must have some kinetic energy because these particles will always have some mass. Along with this, these are moving towards the node. So we have a mass, we have a velocity, so this must possess some kinetic energy. So the third factor is a third property is they possess kinetic energy. Now, how to prove if these particles possess kinetic energy? Now, let's prove the possess kinetic energy possessed by this cathode rays. Now, we have a particle which is moving from cathode to anode with certain energy. Now, if we place a light pedal wheel, wheel made up of very light particle, if we place a light pedal wheel in the path of cathode rays. So we have a light pedal wheel, these are the plates of wheel. These cathode rays are passing through. Now, when these cathode rays positive kinetic energy will strike this blade, if this strikes the blades of the wheel, the kinetic energy possessed by this particle will be transferred to the blade and this will start rotating. So if the blades of a light pedal wheel rotates when it is placed in the path of cathode rays, so we disprove that the cathode rays possess kinetic energy. So 
डे रोटे द ब्लेड ऑफ ए लाइट पेटल वी वेन प्लेस इन इट्स पार्ट सो दिस इज टू द ट्रांसफर ऑफ कैनेटिक एनर्जी पॉजिस बाय दिस कैथोड इज टू द ब्लेड वेन द ब्लेड स्टार्ट टू रोटेट नंबर फोर प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ दिस कैथोड इज नाउ व्हेन वी आर सीइंग टू द दिस दिस कैथोड इज आफ्टर पासिंग थ्रू दिस एनोड स्ट्राइक्स द जिंक सल्फाइड कोटिंग बिहाइंड दिस एंड स्टार्ट्स टू प्रोड्यूस ग्लो द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ ग्लो मीन some chemical action has been taken so if there is no any chemical action then production of glow will not be there so when this electron strikes the zinc sulfide some chemical change takes place that means these cathode rays changes chemical property that means these are the photographic plates Affects photography plates. So the production of glow at the zinc sulfide coating behind this anode proves it is produces chemical change. Chemical change. Next property. these cathode rays also produces heating effect heating effect produces heating effect now we are seeing it is a particles possessing some energy they always possess kinetic energy when these cathode rays strikes a thick substance through which this cannot pass through when this cathode is moving with certain velocity it strikes the surface of this substance this the energy possessed by this cathode rays will be transferred to the point of contact if the energy is transferred the temperature at this particular point will increase so the change in temperature proves it is produces heating effect number 6 property of this cathode rays these cathode rays can penetrate to soft substance that means we are having some particles on this cathode rays in some soft material is placed if the soft material is placed these rays can penetrate inside the soft material that means they produce penetrating effect when some soft substance is placed in its place in its path these can penetrate inside the soft material hence they produce penetrating effect the next property of this cathode rays property number 7 is these cathode rays when they strikes the surface of thick metal like tungsten which is <coughs> very hard metal they produces x rays <coughs> So they produces X-rays when it strikes the surface of hard metals like tungsten. So when this cathode ray strikes the surface of very hard metals like tungsten, X-rays were produced. So means when this strikes the surface of very hot metal 
energy will be transferred and but since electrons cannot penetrate inside this hard metal so energy will be transferred then this metal will be excited is it energy will increase but metal to decrease the excess energy that is being transferred by this cathode ray some energy must be released and that energy is found to be in the x-ray region so when the cathode ray spikes the surface of hard metals x-rays were produced another property of these cathode rays when these cathode rays strikes the gas the gas were found to ionize that means these cathode rays produces ionizing effects so we have a cathode ray if these cathode rays strike some gas molecules in its path suppose these are some gas molecules when this cathode ray strikes the gas molecules these gas molecules were found to be ionized so these cathode rays produces ionizing effect produces ionizing effect so these are the properties of cathode rays observed from this discharge tube performed by J.C. Thompson. These particles possessing these properties were called as electrons. So electrons are nothing but these cathode rays with these features. So this is how electrons were discovered and what was the experimental setup, what is the name of the experiment and what are the properties of these cathode rays. So based on this, J.C. Thompson calculated a property which is known as charge to mass ratio of these cathode rays or electrons. Charge to mass ratio. We represent this charge by E and this mass by N. So we have charge to mass ratio E by M. But E represents charge on electron or a cathode ray. M represents the mass of electron. These charge to mass ratio they were found to be 1.7588 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb per kilogram. 1.7588 into 10 to the power 11 coulomb terms of uh, unit of charge is coulomb, mass measured in terms of kilogram or if not. This is 1.7588 into n to the power 8 coulomb per gram. So from this cathode experiment, he observed the charge to mass ratio of these cathode rays or electrons were found to be 1.7588 into 10 to the power 11 or coulomb per gram or 10 to the power 8 coulomb per gram. Now these cathode rays, as we have discussed the properties, cathode rays, some of the gas is present inside a discharge tube. So these cathode rays were found to be independent of the nature of gas present inside the glass tube. That means if we have taken carbon dioxide, then the properties are found to be same. If we take hydrogen, then also properties were found to be unchanged. That means we can also get this. These cathode rays were found to be independent. Independent of the nature of gas. They can in cathode ray tube. So we have this charge to mass ratio of electrons as discovered by J.J. Thompson from this 
cathode ray discharge tube. Now after this charge to mass, another scientist called Millikan derived the charge of electrons or cathode rays by an experiment known as Millikan's oil drop experiment. American oil drop experiment. So by this oil drop experiment, he calculated the charge of electron. Charge on electron. So by this experiment, American oil drop experiment. The charge on electron that is E were found to be 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. So charge on electron is minus 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 Coulomb. So electrons are negatively charged, so we have a negative charge. Okay, now while measuring this charge to mass ratio, I have just taken the absolute value without any consideration of charge. But in terms of absolute value, look at this. Since electrons are negatively charged, so we should have minus. So E by M ratio, either this is given as minus 1.75 into 10 to the power 11. So that means we are considering the charge. If charges are not mentioned, that means only the absolute values are considered. So look at this, we have charge to mass ratio from the function E by M ratio. We have charge of cathode ray from Millikan oil drop experiment. Now, combining these two, we measure the mass of electron. So therefore, mass of electron, if you take this ratio, charge as measured by Millikan oil drop divided by Charge to mass ratio as measured by this function. So we take the ratio of charge of electron to that of charge to mass ratio. So this comes out to be E into M divided by E. So this gives you the mass. So E by E by M ratio. So E is minus 1.602 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. E by ratio is minus 1.7588 into 10 to the power minus 11 kilogram. So negative, negative cancels out. This comes out to be 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram. So the mass of an electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram. This is the mass. And this mass is measured by taking ratio of E as developed by Millikan oil drop experiment and E by M ratio as measured by J.Z. Thompson. So this is E by M ratio of electron, charge of electron, and the mass of electron. So this is the properties of electron and how electrons were discovered by J. Z. Thomson. Now next coming to discovery of protons. Discovery of protons. Protons were discovered by Goldstein. And the experiment used for this discovery of proton, this was also known as cathode ray, modified cathode ray. Discharge tube experiment. So, as a discharge tube experiment carried over J. Thompson, this was slightly modified by this Goldstein, and by this modification, he could 
discover protons. Now these protons were known as anode rays or this one also known as channel rays. Now what is the difference between these two? There is cathode ray of or anode ray. Now JZ function while well, discovering electron only focus on cathode ray. Whereas at the same time during the same experiment, these Goldstein observed that there were some objects or oh, sorry some particles that were also emerging from a node and moving towards cathode. So JJ Thompson focused on the particles emerging from cathode and moving towards a node. Whereas Goldstein also focused on the stream of particles that were emerging from a node and moving towards cathode. So how he modified is as usual he takes this glass tube this glass tube is fitted with cathode and anode now instead of this cathode he takes a perforated cathode means cathode in which some holes were made and this is connected to an external circuit to provide high voltage This is suction pump through which gas is to be removed so that low pressure condition is generated. Now, uh, the glass surface behind this cathode is coated now with zinc sulfide. Earlier in cathode tube of Delhi Thompson. This was made perforated and glass was coated with zinc sulfide. Now, cathode is made perforated and the glass tube behind this cathode is coated with zinc sulfide. This is zinc sulfide coated. Now, according to JJ Thompson, Some particles emerge from cathode and moving towards anode. These were known as cathode rays, as we have discussed. Now, along with these cathode rays, some other particles were also found to emerge from this anode, and these were moving towards the cathode. Some counter particles. This is anode, this is cathode. Cathode is negative, anode is positive. This is analog, anode rays. This is cathode rays. So JJ Thompson focus on cathode rays, whereas Goldstein focus on this rays emerging from a node and moving towards cathode. Now we are not going to in detail of this, but just mention the property. These rays were found to emerge from a node and moving towards the cathode, so they are known as anode rays or canal rays. These anode rays moving towards cathode. Now, since cathode is made of some small fine holes, so these rays will pass through cathode and strikes the zinc sulfide coated. So, when these particles strike zinc sulfide, the glow will be formed. So, formation of glow at the zinc sulfide coated produce proves that some particles were striking the zinc sulfide coating. So those particles were known as anode rays or canode rays. That means these rays also produce chemical change because when this strikes the surface of zinc sulfide, glow is produced, means chemical change is produced. These 
cannon rays also travels in straight line because when they place an opaque substance, shadow is formed. These cannon rays were found to be positively charged. Why? Because when this is placed or passed through an electric field, these cannon rays were found to deflect towards the negative plate of electric field component. Since they are deflected towards the electric field component, so the charges on these cannon rays should be opposite to that of the charge carried by the plane. So deflection towards negative plate means the charge of this anode is positively charged. So anode rays are positively charged. These anode rays or the cannon rays depends on the charge and gas used inside the tube. Whereas cathode rays says the properties of cathode rays were found to be independent of the nature of the gas taken inside the discharge tube. Whereas these anode rays, the properties depends on the nature of the gas taken inside the container. So the mass of these cathode rays were found to be 9.1 into 10 power minus. 31 kilogram whereas the mass of the kernel rays were found to be proportional to the mass of the gas taken inside the kernel rays the mass of these kernel rays were found to be proportional to the mass of the gas taken inside the container that means these cannon rays were found to be proportional to the nature of gas taken inside the glass tube that is discharge tube now when the gas hydrogen gas is taken inside this tube this hydrogen gas taken inside the tube when produced means this electron is removed this produces protons so the smallest particle positive positive charge that is hydrogen plus so this was known as protons so i repeat the term again why these cannon rays or anode rays were known as protons the smallest positively charged species that could be observed is hydrogen plus so when hydrogen gas is taken inside the discharge tube, this produces hydrogen plus after removal of the lone electron present in hydrogen. So the hydrogen with one positive charge is the smallest positive charge that could be obtained, and that smallest positive charge were known as a node rate of sorry protons. So this is the, the how the term protons comes into picture. So I repeat, when hydrogen gas is taken. This produces hydrogen plus, which is known as proton. So the smallest positive charge species is hydrogen plus, which is also known as protons. So this is the discovery of electron by Goldstein, that is modified cathode ray discharge tube experiment. Then we have discovery of neutrons. Discovery of neutrons by Chadwick. So Chadwick was a scientist who discovered a neutron. Now, how we discovered a neutron? Chadwick was performing some experiment by using alpha particles. Now, he take alpha particles. Alpha particles are nothing but positive charge helium. So when this alpha particle is tries beryllium so we have a beryllium metal a thin sheet of beryllium metal and through this alpha particles were made to strike when this alpha particle strikes beryllium metal some uncharged massive substance were produced so the uncharged massive substance produced were defined as the neutron so that a reaction by which that we discover electrons were we have alpha particles atomic number two means charge is two mass number four these were made to strike on beryllium
Let me number four, mass number nine. After this, this is alpha, alpha particle. This is parallel method. After this, this produces carbon atomic number six, mass number twelve. So the according to law of conservation of mass, during any chemical reaction, mass has to conserve. So we have four, we have nine. <coughs> <coughs> charges 4 plus 2 6 we have 6 charges mass 9 plus 4 13 but we are 12 so this produces another massive substance whose charges is 0 this uncharged uncharged massive substance this one known as neutrons by that way so this one accidentally derived when that way Strikes alpha particles on beryllium metal. When this produces carbon along with some uncharged part heavier particles known as neutrons. So these are the three fundamental particles and how they are discovered. Now combining all this will see the properties of these three fundamental particles. Properties of fundamental particles. So, first we will discuss mass. This is electron, this is proton, this is neutron. Mass in terms of EMU, mass of electron is 0.000. 5 4 unified mass in terms of unified mass proton 1.00727 neutron 1.00749 that also be 1.8 mass in terms of kilogram so this, this is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kilogram. This is 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilogram. 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kilogram. So if you look at this, when comparing the mass, mass of nitrogen is slightly greater than proton, proton which is much greater than that of electron this is mass now the relative mass there is one more power which is known as relative mass mass of electron is approximately 1 by 1 8 3 7 times mass of proton this is relative mass relative mass of proton is 1 this one is 1 Mass of electron with respect to the mass of proton is 1837 times mass of proton. Charge. 